Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk to you about whether or not thyroid medication can cause high blood pressure. And also, we're going to answer the question what you should be doing if you have high blood pressure and you think it's related to your thyroid medication. So let's answer this question first of all, and then we'll get in a little bit to the nitty gritty here. So does taking thyroid medication cause high blood pressure? The answer is not all the time, but it actually potentially can in certain situations. Um, a lot of that has to do with your dose, and we'll talk about how to manage that if you think that's what's happening to you, um, but we'll get into that a little bit later. First of all, I want to focus on why it matters um, and then the connection between thyroid hormone and your heart. So first of all, having high blood pressure is a big deal. Uh, in fact, we know from plenty of studies that having high blood pressure can lead to lots of different complications ranging from stroke to end organ damage, specifically kidney failure, to even heart disease. So there's a lot of reasons that you want to have your blood pressure managed. And if you're a thyroid patient, or just anyone really, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, but you want that to be less than 120 over 80. So that's sort of the optimal range that we're looking at. And so there is a connection between your thyroid um, and your heart, and the way it works is like this. So thyroid hormone interacts with all the cells in your body, but it specifically interacts with your heart in a different way from those other cells. And so it interacts um, on the heart cells and the calcium channel pumps, and by activating those pumps, it can increase the force of contraction and also the heart rate. And that's how it influences both your heart rate, obviously, and then also your blood pressure. So... We're talking specifically about blood pressure here. Um, what, what I want to mention here is that what matters is that you're getting the exact amount of thyroid hormone to your heart cells. And so if you are hypothyroid, meaning you don't have enough thyroid hormone, then your blood pressure is probably going to be lower than it should be. If you have hyperthyroidism, meaning you have too much thyroid, then your heart or your blood pressure is going to be higher. So when it comes to taking thyroid medication, you can manipulate or tweak your the amount of thyroid hormone in your body to get you to whatever is normal for you. Now this isn't the only way, but it's probably one of the main ways. And the same thing can happen, by the way, on your heart rate. And so many of you may be suffering from uh, symptoms such as heart palpitations or a rapid heart rate, and that can also be directly related um, to the amount and type of thyroid medication that you're taking. So when we talk about some of the solutions here, which we're going to now, so how do you deal with high blood pressure from thyroid medication, just realize that these solutions, um, they're, uh, they're relevant to both if you have high blood pressure and also if you have um, a rapid heart rate or tachycardia as we, as we call it. So the first step is you need to take a look at your dose. So probably the most common reason that patients experience high blood pressure uh, related to their thyroid medication is simply because they're taking too much thyroid medication. So that's actually a relatively easy fix because all you need to do is drop your dose and that should fix the problem. Now you can, you know, well I guess the question is how do you know if your dose is too high? So what I recommend that you do is look at your thyroid lab test first of all and then also your other symptoms. So if you, the chances are high that if you have high blood pressure which is related to your dose, you're also going to have other symptoms ranging from hair loss or maybe some weight loss um, and then of course the high blood pressure and probably a rapid heart rate. So these things all tend to go together and they occur in combination. But also, you can actually check your thyroid lab tests. So what does that look like? It'll probably look like having a suppressed or a low TSH in combination with a high free T3 or a high free T4. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step is to take a look at the type of medication that you are using. So I've said this before, um, especially on my other videos here, but not all thyroid medications are created equal. and some are better than others and some also have different side effects than others. And so when it comes to thyroid medications, some medications are much more likely to cause an elevated blood pressure than others. And the types that are probably going to cause um, elevated blood pressure include T3 only medications, so you know that as lyothyronine or cytomel, and then of course pretty much anything that contains T3 and that includes medications such as natural desiccated thyroid. So these are notorious for causing those issues. Um, so what can you do? A lot, the problem for, with a lot of people that they may be facing is that they feel really good on their current dose of thyroid medication. Perhaps their, their energy is getting better, they're not experience, experiencing as much um, fatigue as they once were, maybe they're losing weight, but now they have this high blood pressure. So that's a problem for a lot of people because if they reduce their dose, they may reduce their blood pressure, but the, all those symptoms that they just got rid of might be coming back. So that is a big, that is potentially a big issue for them. So what the best thing to do that I found for people who fit in this situation is to take the same amount that they're taking each and every day, but to divide it up. 
So I use an example here. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. So let's say if you're taking 10 micrograms of Cytomel each day, which is a T3 only thyroid medication. So remember, your heart reacts differently to um, thyroid hormone uh, than the other cells in your body, and it reacts faster and quicker than the other cells do. So the idea here would be to take the same amount um, in the day, but to split it up. So instead of, instead of taking 10 micrograms all at once, in this case of Cytomel, but this could apply to natural desiccated thyroid or, or any other thyroid medication really. So what you would do is you'd take that 10 micrograms in, in the day, but you'd take five in the morning, five in the afternoon, or five in the morning, five in the evening, or some combination. And what that does is it slows down how quickly the T3 is getting to your heart. And if you can do that, then you'll reduce um, the blood pressure because it's not gonna be flushed with all of that thyroid hormone all at once. The same thing also applies if you have um, heart palpitations, by the way, or a rapid heart rate. Remember, those are two separate things. And then finally, the third step is to consider switching thyroid medications. Now, I don't really like this. I don't think that this is the best option, but if you've tried everything else um, and nothing else is working, then you may have to consider this um, because you absolutely, like I said before, you absolutely do not want to have high blood pressure um, for a sustained period of time. And by the way, a sustained period of time is on the order of months, probably closer to 12 plus months. You can, you have some wiggle room there to play around with your blood pressure for several months or several weeks. That's not a problem. So if you notice that it's 140 over 90, let's say, um, obviously we want it less than 120 over 80, but let's say it's 140 over 90, um, you might be freaked out. You're probably not going to feel any symptoms, but that's not that big of a deal to be at that range for a couple months while you figure things out. So don't let that freak you out. Just realize this is not something you want to completely ignore. Now, what you could do is you could just switch medications. Now, sometimes um, switching from NDT to a T4 medication may help temporarily. You could go from T3 to NDT, or you could go within the same class of medications, like let's say you're taking Armour. You could just go from Armour to WP Thyroid or to Nature Thyroid or something like that. But the whole goal here is to just consider switching your medication. You don't necessarily have to step outside of your class. Um, you, you might be able to stay within it, but just try switching things up. And then lastly, what I want to talk about real quick here is taking blood pressure medication if you have, um, if you're also taking thyroid medication. And this is important because some blood pressure medications actually negatively impact thyroid function. So what does that mean? It means that you could be taking thy um, blood pressure medication for your blood pressure, for your high blood pressure, I should say, but that might actually increase the demand of thyroid hormone on your body. Now, medications that are notorious for causing this, these issues include beta blockers. Now, they are, they are not the first line therapy for high blood pressure, but they are often used, um, especially if you're feeling um, tachycard or if you're feeling heart palpitations and things like that. So a lot of thyroid patients may be on beta blockers, whether they realize it or not. Now, a better solution, um, so well, I guess, so we're talking, I guess it's important to make this distinction here. In this article, we've been talking a lot about how thyroid medication can cause high blood pressure. But it's very possible, and a lot of people are in this situation, where they have hypothyroidism and they have high blood pressure from a completely unrelated cause. Those two issues can just coincide with one another. Now, if you fit into that category, instead of just taking thyroid, or instead of taking um, blood blood pressure stopping or reducing medication, it's better to go after the root cause. And so I've included a list of root causes here which lead to elevated blood pressure. Um, because again, you want to avoid taking any medications that you don't have to take, first of all. And second of all, you do not want to take a medication that might negatively impact your thyroid. So some of the major causes of high blood pressure include insulin resistance and obesity. Those are two, I would say, really common causes. But there's more than that, including you know, excess stress, you can, smoking can do it, a poor diet can do it, um, a lack of exercise, all of these things can contribute. So you want to focus on those as opposed to taking thyroid medication and blood pressure medication because that combination is just not going to do you well over time. So that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you found this helpful. Again, the moral of the story is, yes, absolutely, some types of thyroid medication can lead to high blood pressure, but that doesn't happen all the time, um, and there are ways to fix it. Now, almost always I've been able to just manipulate or tweak the dosing a little bit, um, the time of day or how frequently patients take it throughout the day. I, ne I rarely, rarely ever have to um, completely switch to a different medication, especially if they're feeling good. So that should be your overall goal. But as always, treat that blood pressure, find the root cause and get rid of it because that will give you um, the best long-term gain. So if you have any questions about this, uh, leave them in the comments below. I want to hear about it. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.